I'm Dr. Chris Creighton. In this video, we'll be talking about factoring polynomials and solving polynomial equations. The key objectives here is to be able to factor polynomials, and if you're not able to, justify why it is prime or ir irreducible, and being able to solve quadratic equations using factoring. Later on, we'll talk about completing the square and the quadratic formula. To get us started here, we're going to first talk about solving polynomial equations. So in this problem here, we're trying to solve x minus 3 times x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I'd like to note that this problem is already factored. So the remaining problems will talk about factoring, but once you have some fa the polynomial factored, it's going to look something like this. And so the question is, how do we solve a factored polynomial? Well, we use the zero factor property. The zero factor property is stated is that if you have two numbers, a and b, which multiply to zero, then either a is zero or b is zero or both. Again, if you don't know, the mathematical or means one or the other one or both, not the English exclusive or. So in this example here, by the zero factor property, we have three factors that are multiplying to zero. So then the zero factor property, which I like to abbreviate ZFP, we have that x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, or 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we have three potential roots, or zeros. We have to solve each of these for x. So for instance, this first one is an x is equal to 3, or x is equal to minus 1, or x is equal to minus 1 half which gives us the solutions as x is equal to 3 minus 1 and minus 1 half. I do want to point out that sometimes you'll put a curly bracket around it, or you might see a curly bracket in the homework. It ju that just means it's the set that containing these three solutions. So our goal here is the factor, because once you factor, you use a zero factor property to write down your solutions. And one of the more basic ways of factoring is factoring by grouping or noticing that if you have common factors uh, amongst each term of the polynomial. And so what I mean by that is that if I look at these first two terms here, I notice that we have an m squared involved. Likewise, if I look at these next two terms, I notice that I have a 4 involved. So that means is that I can factor a m squared out of the first two terms and a 4 out of the second two terms. So this looks like m squared times an m minus 4 plus 4 minus m plus 4. So that's getting close. So one other thing that I notice here is that I have an m plus 4, but a minus m, or sorry, m minus. So. Now, when I factor this out, one thing that I now notice is that I have an m minus 4 and a minus m plus 4. These differ by a negative sign. So that means I can factor out a minus 1 factor of that second term and really transform this into an m squared, m minus 4, minus 4, m minus 4. And now we get these common factors again with an m minus 4 to give us that this is equal to a m squared minus 4 times an m minus 4, which factors us a lot more. Now there is a special thing to notice here. It's called difference of squares. And this is how we factor that m squared minus 4. So this is if you have something of the form a squared minus b squared, and in this case here, a is m and b is going to be 2 because 2 squared is 4. This factors as an a minus b times an a plus b. So in this case here, this factors more as an m minus 2 times an m plus 2 times an m minus 4. So now we have completely factored this polynomial by grouping. And that, again, notices that we have a difference of squares involved right there, which helps us factor that a bit more. So next, we're going to factor another polynomial. This one's going to be done a little differently. But first, 
the first thing you need to always look at is can I factor anything out of each term? And I say, yes, I have an x involved in each term. So I can write this as x times an x squared plus 2x minus 3. And so now the question is, how can I factor x squared plus 2x minus 3? And this is the way that I honestly think about it. So to approach that part of the problem, so we have the x squared plus 2x minus 3. And so I do this thing called a factor square, where I draw a square, and I go, what do I need to figure out on the top and the side so that the inside's area is the polynomial? And so what I mean by that is that if I plug in an x squared there, and a minus 3 here, I need to figure out what is in these two spots so that they add to a 2x, so that the area of this polynomial is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3. Because if the area of this square is this polynomial, the solutions or the factors will be along the top. That will give us a one factor. And then on the side here, and that will give us our second factor. So the question is, we need this first spot up there to be an x, and this second spot here to be an x, because we get that x times an x gives us an x squared as an area. Likewise, we need to figure out a spot here, what goes here and what goes here, so that they both multiply to minus 3. And then once we do that, we need to know which ones add to 2. So we need to find two numbers that are factors of minus 3 and add to 2. So in this case here, 3 factors as 1 times 3. So negative 3 factors as 1 times minus 3 or minus 1 times 3. And noting there, we have a minus 1 times 3. Minus 1 plus 3, so this is going to the add part, gives us that 2. So I have a 3 there and a minus 1 here. And so filling this out, we get a 3x there, because that is a 3 times an x, and then a minus x here, because that is the x times minus 1. And now you can see that the 2x can be split up as minus x plus 3x. And so when we do that, if I write this down and copy that in, so we get x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3, we notice that there's now going to be some grouping. I get an x times an x minus 1 here, plus 3 times an x minus 1, so that this is now equal to an x plus 3 times an x minus 1. That factors it. So our final answer up here is going to be an x times an x plus 3 times an x minus 1. And that is how to use a factor square to factor a quadratic. So next we're going to factor 6x squared minus x minus 2. So first, taking a look at that factor square, which I find is, is quite useful, although many people know of many different techniques. So taking a look at this factor square, this very first box here has to be that 6x squared, which means that we're going to have a coefficient of an x on either of the spots on the other side. Those coefficients will be factors of 6, so it's going to be a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 6 such that when they multiply together, you'll get that 6x squared. Likewise, this last box is going to be the minus 2. So then what goes here and what goes here are going to be two numbers which multiply to minus 2. So the method of trying to figure out what goes in these four spots now is I call this the AC method where the leading term here is A, the middle term here is called B, and the last term here is called C. It comes from the general quadratic, which is AX squared plus BX plus C. So in this case here, A is 6. So the AC method 
is that we take our leading coefficient a6 and multiply it by c, our last coefficient, minus 2, and then we get here a minus 12. So now, instead of looking at the factors of 2, which multiply together, or which can add to that um, middle term there, b, we're looking at multiple, or factors of minus 12. So our essential op options here are 1 and a minus 12, or a negative 1 and a positive 12, 2 minus 6, negative 2, and then we get a positive 6, 3 and a minus 4, and a 4 and a minus 3. So those are all of our factors there, and so we need to figure out which ones add to that minus x, or well, technically to the minus 1 for the coefficients. So in this case here, these ones will be that minus x. Taking a look, it's right there. We get 3x minus 4x is equal to our minus x. So perfect. So what goes in this box then? I'm going to put the 3x there, and I'm going to put the minus 4x there. And so now we need to break it apart and figure out what goes in each of those blank spaces. So taking a look at this one right here with the 3x, what that means is that this coefficient needs to be a 3 because it needs to also be a divisor of 6, and that's the 3. So that leaves over here a 1 because we have a 3x on the top. This one needs to be multiplied by, this 1 needs to be multiplied by the 3x to give us the 3x there, so it has to be a 1 which then leaves a 2 there, so that we get a 2 times 3 gives a, giving us this 6. But then we look over here, we need to multiply 2x by something to give us a minus 4x, and that has to be a minus 2. So, 6x squared minus x minus 2 factors as the top factor up here, which is the 3x minus 2, times the side factor over here, which is a 2x plus 1, which is rather nice. Alternatively, you can view this as 6x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 2, replacing negative x by 3x minus 4. So now we notice that this first one is a factor of a 2x that pops out. And so this is left with a 3x minus 2 plus 3x minus 2, because those don't have any common factors, which again factors as a 2x plus 1 times a 3x minus 2.